a hundred backers. This is a book talking about how to make ten thousand percent return. It's very impressive, to be honest, but also sounds kind of ridiculous and wrong at the same time. Yeah. So I did not make, you know. 10,000% return, but I did have a great year in 2023 thanks to the secrets in this book and other ones as well. My investment portfolio, my Robinhood account is up 20k, $20,000 in 2023. That was great, outperforming the market, S&P 500, the VOO. Trust me, this is not an ad for this book, but I do feel like the secrets in this book make me feel like beating the market is easier and it's more doable. And those secrets also led to some changes in my investment portfolio, some of my holdings. I sold out of DKS and bought FICO and SCHG. So what changed my mind? Why I added those positions? And what are the secrets in the book? And how can you actually outperform the market? So in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to use the most user-friendly language to go over all of the above. First, we're going to go over the portfolio performance, things I've learned, how actually I could beat the market. Is it even possible? Next, I will go through all the changes in the portfolio. What did I buy? What did I sell? Why I made those changes? And what are the stocks in my portfolio right now? And lastly, I will show you how I use my design thinking to iterate my strategy moving forward. I will show you what I would do with my cash, with my stocks, with my options, sprinkled with some macro news and how they affect my decision making by showing you my learnings, my design thinking frameworks, real example, real money, so that you can feel more inspired and empowered to beat the market from home, to make more money and make yourself rich. And you don't have to smash the like button just yet, do that in the end. If you find this video useful and insightful in any way, hold me accountable. Now grab your favorite drink and let's get into it, y'all. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. I'm super excited today to share how I use my design thinking on investing, on making myself rich. Why am I still not rich yet? Well, we can at least see how much richer I got in 2023, which leads to chapter one, investment portfolio performance update. This is real money, real numbers, real performance, in a real Robinhood account. In the full year of 2023, my portfolio grew 12.5%, up 20K, $20,000, including stock gains, option gains, dividends, and cash interests. The first two rows shows the total return of my portfolio and VU over time, meaning every time I got my paycheck, I put money in both, that's how I measure them. It's a more realistic way of measuring it. And it beats the market. I'm grateful, I'm happy about this. Cash means if you hold cash from January 1st, 2023 and do nothing, you will get 4.6% return. In the last row, S&P 500, you measure from the beginning to the end, which is not that realistic because you don't factor in the money that you put in throughout the year. Because I don't have a big chunk of money put in in the beginning of the year. These numbers are very straightforward. So let's get into something that's less straightforward. The strategy behind this and how beating the market is even possible. My current strategy is rather simple. Buy good companies and trade options on those good companies. For stocks, I have been buying good companies. As a designer, let me introduce you to the design thinking and process. And the first phase is always research. I did a lot of research in 2023. I learned about the business, finance, valuation, including reading another book, Investing for Growth by Terry Smith, who is a British fund manager who has been beating the market for a long time. The book points out five important metrics to look at. Return on capital employed, gross margin, operating margin, cash conversion, and interest coverage. The higher the better for all of those, of course. I'm going to spare the details for now because that's the video for another time. In 2023, S&P 500, the market, has an ROCE of 18%, gross margin 45%, operating margin 16%, cash conversion 76%, and interest coverage of 11 times. You don't need to understand exactly what they mean to get my point, because here's the magic. To beat the market. If these metrics of a company, any company, is better than the metrics of the S&P 500, then it means that company is a more superior business 
than the average S&P 500. And if you own that company, you should beat the market. In 2023, for my portfolio, I have ROC of 20%, gross margin 48%, operating margin 29%, cash conversion 96%, interest coverage 32 times. So it's not that big of a surprise that my company's my portfolio outperforms the market. So actually, do you try this at home? Feel free to try this. Take a look at the companies that you own and how those metrics of your company stack against the market. The S&P 500, the VOO. There are many sources you can find those metrics. One place that I use is Guru Focus, where you can find all those metrics and more. That covers the buy good companies part. For options, I managed to have over $5,000 gains selling cover calls and cash secure puts mainly on Tesla. And this combination is known as the wheel strategy, which takes advantage of the theta decay of an option contract with low delta and let time decay works on your favor to bring the option value down to zero so that you can get to keep all the premium. What? Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's way too technical for this video. But I did make a video about wheeling options. I'll leave it up here and in the description box down below. And that $5,000 gain in option trading in itself is equivalent to 19% gain, which was pretty good. That helped me beat the market. Well, wait, wait, wait. since your return on the options is 90%, but the return of the total portfolio is 12.5%, wouldn't it make more sense to just YOLO all into options? Do have an answer for that, but that's a video for another time. So the performance is pretty straightforward. The strategy is now clear. What's not clear is what is in my portfolio? What companies do I own? What stocks do I own? Which is a perfect segue to chapter two changes in the portfolio. Companies that I sold, companies that I bought. After my mid-year check-in video in 2023, I still own most of the companies, but I did sell all the DKS, Dick's Sporting Goods, and I bought FICO and SCHG. There are two main reasons that I dropped DKS. First, the company is actually not in the S&P 500, and I tried to only pick companies from S&P 500. And here's why. Did you know there's a whole list of requirements for a company to get into the S&P 500 index? Did you know companies inside the S&P 500 index have certain privileges and statuses? So by only picking companies out of the S&P 500 index, I can ensure anything that I pick will pass the bar, the minimum bar, the requirement, the standard that is established by some professionals. And plus, it's way easier to pick company that beats the market from 500 than 3000. Second reason, FICO is a better company than DKS. When I bought DKS originally, I only focused on ROCE, not the other four. But since now I know those four are important as well, so I factor those in. And then when you compare those five metrics between DKS and VOO, and you can see three of the five metrics of DKS is lower than VOO, lower than the market. So that's not ideal. And if you compare FICO against VOO, you will see four out of five metrics are better than the market. So in comparison, DKS seems less superior. Don't get me wrong, Dick Sporting Goods is not a bad company, it's a profitable company. The revenue is steady, I've shopped there before. But compared to FICO, the companies that raise consumers to approve their personal loans, home loans, and auto loans, the score that keeps showing up on your bank apps, without going into details, just look at the metrics. Remember, if those numbers are better, they tend to outperform the market. So let's look at all of them. Look at how it outperforms. This is VOO and DKS, it's not even close. That's why I swap out DKS and bought FICO. Another holding that I added is SCHG. It's not a company, it's an ETF, it's a fund. I had this thought a while ago. Can I just buy one thing and one thing only and still beat the market? Since no company really lasts forever, that means an ETF, the ones that host many company and auto rotate the bad ones, is a more reasonable choice. Then the question becomes, what is a market beating ETF. I read three books last year. This one, the 10,000% return one, investing for growth, and where the money is. But it's one common thread, growth. Earnings growth, PE multiple growth, and a compound of those growths. And that's how you get superior return that beats the market. That common thread, that secrets, pointed me to one thing, an ETF that holds good companies with growth. After screening for a handful of ETFs, looking into what companies those ETFs own, what the strategy behind those ETFs are, SHG seems to meet the criteria. So FICO and SHG both go to the testing stage, looking at the design process, 
and let's see how that unfolds. That's my portfolio update. It's going well. That's exciting. What is more exciting is 2024. The interest rate cut, the more gen AI development, Apple Vision Pro is coming out. So let's see what I'm going to do moving forward, which leads us to chapter three, my 2024 plan. What am I going to do moving forward? And exactly what I'm going to do on Robinhood. I'll break this down into three categories, stocks, options, and cash. For stocks, I'm going to keep buying all the companies that I own. When I get my paycheck, it automatically invests into those companies because I've set up automatic recurring investing on Robinhood, which is pretty neat. If any of my holdings PE dips below 21.8 PE, I'm going to buy a little more. That's something that I discovered in 2023. The average or median PE for the market is 21.8. So if I have superior company and its PE is lower than the average market, that presents an opportunity. I'm going to buy more of everything when the market drops 10%, 15%, 20%. This is another piece of learning in 2023. If the market drops 20%, bear market, pushed down by all those hedge funds and big players. Likely a lot of things are oversold, which again, opportunity. And 2024 is election year. There will be some volatility in about maybe November. The market can drop 7-10%, which means opportunities. And speaking of opportunities, I will keep my eyes on new opportunities. There are a few under my radar. Airbnb, Meta, Google, Microsoft, Nvidia, Chipotle. Quite a lot of Magnificent 7, isn't it? You know, all the generative AI stuff is still happening. Companies are implementing those. They're training new AI models. Do you know anything about the Meta Ego XO4D, which is one of their research and AI effort to train AI models that understand the environment by intaking first-person perspective footages. It's for the metaverse, for AR, for VR. And speaking of AR, VR, Apple Vision Pro is coming out very, very soon. So you see AR, VR, generative AI, you need more training data, more compute, networking, storage, etc. I'll let you draw the conclusion there. For the last bit on stocks, I'm going to write down all the nuances of my strategy from research, testing, keeping it very specific, very concrete, turning into a repeatable playbook. So if you read it, you can see, oh, this is how you pick the company, pick the stock. What do you look at? How do you screen? How do you find companies, buy them? and beat the market. I'm actively working on this, so stay tuned for that update, or even better, join my newly live Discord channel, and we can share and chat more there. As for options, I'm gonna just do one thing, very simple, I'm gonna keep willing, keep selling puts and selling calls on the companies that I own. Speaking of which, I still have 100 shares of Tesla I'm selling calls on. Lastly, for cash, I typically want to keep maybe 10 each percent cash, 20% max, but now I think 15% is okay because everything has gone up so much. Everything's expensive. Look at the PE for the market, it's 25, and the average, the mean is 21.8. So by holding cash, I have the money to buy when there's opportunity. And since I have 15% each cash, I'm gonna keep them in Robinhood and I will keep my Robinhood Gold subscription so that they keep paying me 5% interest for my uninvested cash, which is great. I have money sitting on the sideline, also earning 5% interest by doing nothing. Not bad. Speaking of Robinhood, it's still my favorite brokerage app. It's easy to use, has great design, clean, good features. Even if you don't pay for the Robinhood Gold subscription, you still get 1.5% interest on uninvested cash, which is shockingly much better than the savings account from Chase and Bank of America. So if you don't have that yet, feel free to use my referral code down below, sign up, download the app, and get a free start worth up to $200. Great deal. Finally, I wish you a happy new year and thank you for tuning in. If you find this video helpful and useful in any way, like and subscribe down below to help support this very, very small channel and I will greatly appreciate it. Remember that 5K, that 19% return from trading options, the selling put and selling call wheel strategy. If you want to know how it works and how to get started on that in 15 minutes, great news. I've used my best design thinking and craft to capture that in this video for you. Check it out right there. Like and subscribe to support me again, spending hours making this video and keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Cheers.